Today I'm going to talk about laser tattoo removal and the problem that we can face with some ink colours. How strongly an ink colour might absorb some laser energy comes down to its absorption coefficient. So what exactly does that mean? Well, the absorption coefficient is essentially the probability that a photon will be absorbed by uh, some atom in the ink. So with some inks, you're going to have a very high probability for some particular wavelength, and for others, it will be low. So, for example, if we consider the 1064 nanometer wavelength from the NDAG laser, well, we know from experiment that the black ink typically absorbs this very strongly, whereas red will be not quite as strong, green maybe even lower, and yellow even lower still. Um, this really depends though, on which inks are being tested because they're all different, of course. The Ruby laser at 694 nanometers will have a different set of uh, absorptions and then the Alexandrite at 755 nanometers will be different again. So the reality is that the absorption coefficients of these different ink colors changes depending on the wavelength that's being uh, fired at them. Um, now, I've just drawn up a whole bunch of little uh, little rectangles here just as a, a, an indicator these are not real values um, the real values depend very much on the individual inks because of course they are all different so let's have a look at um, what some of these numbers might be if we assume that uh, black ink absorbs 1064 nanometers um, with a, a, an efficiency of around 90% then red might only be about 50%, green maybe 30%, and yellow might only be 10%. So there's quite a wide variation between the uh, different colours. What that means then is that yellow absorbs nine times less energy compared to the black. So you would have to fire nine times the fluence at that yellow to have a similar reaction that you would see in the black ink. For the green ink, you would have to fire around about three times the fluence for a comparison, a comparable uh, effect to the black ink. And for red ink, you'd need to fire nearly double compared to black ink. So the, the, the black ink is the easiest to remove because it absorbs most uh, efficiently. But as you um, change colours, that, uh, that absorption efficiency changes uh, or drops usually quite dramatically. So what happens if we fire 532 nanometers at uh, this yellow ink rather than 1064? Well, I've got here that uh, the 532 has a 20% efficiency compared to 10% from the 1064. So that means that rather than firing nine times the fluence that we did at 1064 compared to the black, we'd only need to fire about four and a half times the fluence to achieve a, a similar reaction in the yellow. But even that might not be uh, particularly good. So what do we do with uh, poorly absorbing ink colours? Well, there are two choices. Uh, first of all, you try a particular wavelength on all the colours and look for some kind of response. If there is no reaction, then you may want to increase the fluence slowly. But if you still see no reaction by around about 6 joules per square centimetre, then you might decide to change the wavelength. So the second choice is you try your wavelength, you look for your response, no reaction, you change the wavelength rather than increase the fluence like in the first choice. But again, if you still see no reaction by around about six joules per square centimeter, then you might need to stop. Now, the problem is that you may not see a reaction very clearly, even at uh, high fluences for any wavelength. And that's purely because the, the reaction is, is um, fairly low level and fairly subtle. So then you need to make a choice, which one do you want to do? Um, if it was up to me, I would always start with uh, one wavelength and increase the fluence um, and then try and see some kind of reaction before considering changing wavelength. So the important points to, to note here is that we can never know which ink colors are actually in tattoos. Um, our, our eyes might uh, tell us one thing, but the reality is that the, uh, they can have a, a mixture of colours. Um, that, that's quite normal, apparently, in professional tattoos. 
different wavelengths have different effects in the skin. Uh, the um, the lower wavelengths, particularly 532 nanometers, has a quite quite high absorption in melanin and uh, in hemoglobin in the blood, and therefore can have more of a, a negative impact on those um, on those particular tissues. So, out of the the laser wavelengths we have available today, 1064 is probably the safest because it has the lowest absorption in melanin and hemoglobin. Um, but the reality is you, you're going to have to test um, the, the reactions with the laser wavelengths that you have available. So what this means is that uh, we, we might achieve better results if we target the colour specifically, but we, we would need to, to use um, different fluences and, and different wavelengths um, for the different colours. Each time we treat, we can't, we can't, if you have a multicolored uh, tattoo, you can't just treat it all as if it were just one um, tattoo. You really have to consider the different colors as almost as different tattoos. So for example, in this um, multicolored tattoo, well, the black ink you could treat with uh, almost any wavelength because uh, black is absorbed, uh, black absorbs all, almost all the uh, laser wavelengths we use now. The, um, the kind of greeny color we see here, well, you may want to use Alexandrite or Ruby laser because they are, they are pretty well absorbed in, uh, in green. Or you might want to use the 532 at a, at a higher fluence than the Alex and the, and the Ruby laser. For the, um, the kind of orangey, ready type colors down here, you might want to use the 532 with a, a low to mid fluence. Or you might want to use a 1064 or the Alexandrite wavelength at a higher fluence. I mean, that may well achieve the same response. For the light blue colour here, light blue is always quite tricky. Um, Alexandra appears to be the best option um, in, in many cases. But again, you may want to use the 532 if you don't have an Alexandra, but at a higher fluence. Um, so the reality is that um, you, you, can, you can treat all these different colours with different wavelengths, but the fluences may well be quite um, significantly different. Um, there's a good paper here by this chap, uh, Choi, um, who uh, did a study back in 2018 and looked at uh, the effects of picosecond and nanosecond lasers on multicolored tattoos. And he came up with some, um, some really interesting results. Um, I haven't talked about um, pulse length at all in this um, presentation. This is purely uh, wavelength um, related. Uh, I will talk about um, nanosecond and picosecond lasers in a, in a future uh, discussion. Hey, thanks for listening. You'll find more stuff on our um, blog and uh, on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you.